Hello, Michael here from Small Robot Studio, here with another Renderman 23 tutorial. And today we're going to be having a look at how to create procedural planet textures using Renderman in Maya. Um, I'm not going to go over every possible combination of a planet that you can do, but I'll give you some tips here on how you can generate your own and get your own ideas happening. And um, yeah, just figure out a few different things. So the one that we're going to start with is going to be a hot planet, um, like a sort of lava type planet. So I've already got, oh, actually we'll create a new, if you watched the previous tutorial, you know that that is the Earth. We're going to get rid of the Earth and we're going to replace it with a new planet. Subdivide that just with three or smooth, smooth shade it with three on the keyboard. And then we're going to create a new Pixar surface shader like so. So we're going to be doing this ba mainly with a fractal. And so we will grab a Pixar fractal pop it in the scene like so, expand that out with three, result, uh, run the result RGB and the views color. And in the fractal settings, um, we're going to increase the layers to something high, nine or 10. Um, this will give it more detail. And the hype shade editor here, if you don't know where it is, you can click this button and it'll bring it up. I've got mine docked. We will continue to edit the fractal. So what we can do is run the IPR and that will give us an indication of what it looks like. So what we're looking for here is to make the light areas um, be the, the brighter parts of the lava and the dark areas be the cooler parts of the, the, the not burning parts of the lava. You like you get the rocky areas. So we need probably a bit more frequency and um, increase the last scenario touch. Um, dimension probably I want nice contrast, but I do want a little bit of detail as well. So I don't want it to be too, I don't want it to be too busy. I do want there to be some large islands. Okay, so this is sort of what I'm looking for here. Um, what I'm doing is I'm just balancing the erosion into the negatives. Um, and what that's doing is some creating some darker splotches. Whereas if you make it higher, it sort of makes whiter splotches. So if you're looking for more um, hot areas, you can do it that way. Um, but I do want some um, dark or black. Um, so negative, basically negative one is going to do the trick for me. Um, slightly less than negative one, I mean negative one, two. And then the variation, I've got it at about 0.5. And that's just going to um, change it sort of as you see there. You can also use turbulent, which um, does make it look pretty cool. Um, I might flick that on a little bit later. And you could also... If you're looking at this, you could see how you could use this for procedural clouds, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Okay, so we've got the basis for our lava here. We've got some, some white areas that are going to be the lava and some dark areas, which are going to be the islands. And what we need to do is to define the color. So we're going to use a ramp. And how this is going to work is the, um, we'll use a PXR ramp, is that we're going to run the result, uh, the result F from the fractal into the spline map. And this is going to tell the ramp um, the position, uh, at what position, what color it should be. So we'll go from uh, basic setup black to um, the next color will be red and the next color will be orange, a ready orange, and then the next color will be yellow. And so what that means is at a value of zero, which is going to be the left side of the ramp, everything, anything that is around that value on the fractal is going to be black. And then everything of a value of uh, one or white is going to be yellow. So when we run that result RGB into the diffuse color, you'll see that's what it does. So if you want to see more black, what you need to do is move your ramp more to the uh, right and move your black in a bit more. And you don't necessarily have to use any of these colors. Obviously you can change it up to build of your be whatever you want. You don't necessarily have to use straight black. You could make it like a dark, dark red, like I've done here. I might make it slightly darker, like that, and you get your planet that sort of looks like that. And then we can use our fractal to get um, a, to get a bit more surface detail with a bump map, and we're on the result F into the input bump and then the result N into the bump normal of our lava planet. And you get that and that is much too bumpy, but unless that's what you're looking for, we'll change it to sort of maybe 0.01 and we get that. 
So we've got some nice surface um, things happening there. That actually might need to be inverted. So we'll make it negative 0.01. And then that way, the islands, the dark islands are taller than the lava. So you can sort of think of them as little mountains with molten lava flowing between them. Now this planet is dark and it's made of lava, so it should be emitting light. So what we want to do is use our color from the Pixar ramp to drive the glow of it. So we'll run that into the top there and we'll find uh, the glow color. And then in the Pixar material, we'll go down to glow. And we can just increase that like so. So now you get a lava type planet, which could also be construed as a star or a sun. So that is pretty straightforward. So now why don't we create a new planet that is not made of lava, or we could just go in, change these colors to be, say, oh, we'll actually turn the glow off. All right, so I've just changed the fractal slightly um, to make this look more like a, I don't know, Neptune or something. Neptune's a greeny blue planet, I think, from memory. Um, so just a, a random um, variation on color there. Okay, and one other thing we can do is make our blue um, sort of water areas um, specular. So we can just increase this, the face color on the specularity of our, la of our planet. It's not a lava planet anymore, um, but you'll see everything specular. So what we can use is a PXR threshold and run our result RGB into the um, threshold and then the out into the specular face color. And at the default settings, it actually pretty much does what I want it to. So you'll see that the areas that are meant to be um, grass are no longer specular and the areas that are blue are specular, um, like an ocean should be. Now the bump I think is much too high, so we'll change that down to 0 0.005. And now we get a much smoother looking planet a little bit of surface variation. You could also just turn it off if you're not happy with it at all, but you can see that the specularity is working as intended now. And our light actually, in, in all honesty, should not be a square, it should be a circle because there are no square planets in the universe that we are currently aware of. So I'll quickly do that. Okay, so that's looking pretty cool, but it could look a little bit cooler if we got some clouds happening on it. So we're gonna create some procedural cr clouds for it now. Um, so the same way we did it in the previous tutorial, this is going to be our alien planet. We're going to create a duplicate of it by hitting control D and change this to alien planet underscore clouds. And we'll increase that scale by 1.01. Uh, I think that was the size we used. It might have been 0 0.005 actually. All right, so we need to create a new shader for that. All right, so we'll grab our shader that we just created and we'll change this to be called Alien Clouds. And we'll grab a Fractal again. And now we can design our clouds just by rendering it here in the viewport. All right, so we've got our clouds. You can use my settings here just by copying them. Um, if your scales are the same, then you should get the same result. And we can also attach a PXR manifold 2D to this and run the result into the manifold. And this will just allow us to change the scale. Um, and so you can increase it, uh, sorry, decrease the size of the clouds just by increasing the scale. Basically, it's increasing the repeats. Um, whereas, in, conversely, if you decrease that size, you'll get larger clouds like so. And we'll just run that uh, result F into presence. And we don't actually need to run it into the diffuse color because we can just make the diffuse color white. And at the moment, I would say that the clouds are a little bit too subtle. So I'll just go back and make some adjustments. So what we really want here is it to be whiter. Um, because the white areas are driving the areas that are going to be visible um, and then the black areas are not going to be visible. Okay, so a quick way to do it on this one is actually to detach the manifold because it was actually affecting the um, value a bit too much because the way it was scaling it. So that's actually not too bad as is. 
you can do it actually almost creates atmosphere just by having a little bit of offset but you can see the nice shadows and the shadows will become more obvious depending on the relative angle of the light and we don't need to be using the diffuse color necessarily um, so we can actually just increase that to be white or if you want the clouds to be a crazy color you can make them purple um, or whatever um, you can base them on because those clouds could would possibly be being affected by the gases in the atmosphere so that would change their color so you can get some interesting effects like so and then the same thing again we're going to du uh, duplicate our clouds and we're going to create a pixar volume and this will be called alien atmosphere and then that scale needs to be slightly larger so we'll make it 0.0 1.0 1.02 is what we used yep and uh, we could change that diffuse color to be sort of pink and um, actually one thing I would like to see is a bit more detail in the clouds. So let's finalize this by grabbing our alien clouds and we'll just add the fractal into the bump map as well. Otherwise they just look a bit too boring. All right, now we're getting some something a bit more interesting happening. Um, and we can just reduce the scale to 0.1. And you can see that the definition of the clouds just improves quite dramatically and really just makes them pop off the surface um, just by having their own surface um, shadows essentially. Okay, so one problem that you do get when using the bump map on your clouds is because we're using this presence um, to determine where, what's visible and the bump map is creating a displacement or a, a pretend displacement, um, you get this um, sort of defined edge um, at the where essentially the terminator would be on the shadow um, and that's just because of the way the bump map works in relation to where the light's coming from um, so one way that you can sort of fix that well there's two ways that you can fix it you change the surface normal mix which you'll lose a little bit of detail but it will improve that um, but you could also if you wish add in a displacement um, and just create a scalar displacement. So we're going to run the result f um, from the fractal fractal into the displacement scalar, and then we'll just reduce the gain. And to start with, you'll get some <laughs> really crazy clouds. Which, hey, look, I'm not going to tell you how to make your planets if you want them to look like that. It does look cool. I will give it that. Um, just uh, reduce the gain to get it down to like 0.0. Oh, probably 05 and because of the displacement it will hide um, that edge that you are sort of getting and then you can just re-enable your atmosphere to get your your clouds and some nice shadows from your clouds and stuff on the surface because of that extra height you get from the clouds they they're actually capturing a little bit more light than what the planet is at the edges which creates a nice little bit of surface uh, variation there in the shadow area so um, yeah obviously they'll increase your rendering time a little bit which is unfortunate but um, for a still uh, that's probably going to be okay and for a long shot it's going to be really nice and then you know set up your shot as you would normally so make sure you join us on patreon if you're interested in getting sync files and assets from tutorials like this and if you haven't already Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future tutorials for things like Render Man and other renderers and DCCs like Houdini. Drop a like to make sure other people can find the tutorial as well. Thank you very much for watching though. This has been Michael with Small Robot Studio. We'll see you in the next tutorial.